YouTube. Um, I'm just putting together this uh, this board here. This is uh, Adam 1875, one channel, and that's kind of I'm going to build the other half here. I'm taking it from a pre-existing. Um, I, I built onto this socket board, breadboard, whatever you want to call it. Mm. This is why sometimes it's a good idea to check your check your components, regardless of what their indications may or may not be. Now you see here, I wonder if I can do this in such a way. Right, let's just shift you that one a bit closer. So we've got two components here, they're both the same. They're a bit closer. They're supposed to be one ohms. Yep, each of them one ohms. Now one of them measures one ohms, and the other one does not. Let's see which one's which. Okay, so I've got to do this a little bit. A bit khaki handy because I've only got one pair of hands. But So if I take this, this first one, put this onto here, I'll just pop that down. And take the camera. So there it is. Being measured there. And look at this. 5.4. Hmm. Let me just put that back and I get the other one. This is one from each channel, you know. I took out the first one, measured it, and it was 5.4. And I took the other one out from the other channel just to see. So there it is. And look at that. That's much better. So it's always worth checking, even if you've been using the components. Um, this particular component goes between it goes between pin four on this LM eighteen seventy five and the output capacitor, the speaker. So it's um, you know it's a uh, it's a vital component. There's a Big difference between those two. That one I'm going to throw away is damaged. And put another one in its place. That's no good at all. I tested all this as well before I decided to set it up on this perf board, and it all works perfectly okay. It'll be interesting to see if there's any difference when I put the a fresh one ohm resistor in. I'm trying to show you I've done it now. These heat sinks are balanced on the back of the 1875. There's, there, there's no anything holding it to the board, so I'm not going to move the board around too much. It's just there until I, until I can get that heat sink on and get it to uh, get some brackets on the board. There we go. I'm trying to stay out of the light as I do that. Can't really do that. So, I've been listening to it for the last hour or so. I've got this pixel for a couple of uh, analog meters there. Both of them AVOs. One of them is a test set number one. That's the one on the right there. That's an RAF jobby on the seal on the side, the calibration seal that's got RAF on it. And the number, and that's uh, an AVO 8 Mark III. And at the minute they're connected up and they're just acting like uh, VU meters. If you like on the outputs so here, there's one, there's the other one. So I'm going to put a little tune on that just to uh, see you get a bit of what it sounds like and then I'm going to connect it up and do some power, power readings. I should say measurements really, shouldn't I? Measurements and power measurements. I'll, before I try and play with it, I'll show you that uh, playing with this I managed to rip the crap out of my cones. Uh, the bottom rubber is all gone around the sides and there's actually where the bite, where the tissue is, there's um, a big piece missing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some more of the... Uh, I'll get it, hold on. 
this is the stuff I'm using. Uh, on the right up, this is uh, like organic. There's nothing in here, no chemicals that can hurt you. Apparently, you can't read it because it's Mandarin. Unless you can read Mandarin, of course. I can't read Mandarin at all. Um, but on the on the uh, on eBay, where I got it from, it says it's all organic, and this is this is uh, a silicon rubber. But it does keep a little bit more movement in it. And if I just brush it on, nice and thin, coating that. I've just got it to stick. I've, I've done one lot on the actual cones, like, as you can see. And on that top bit, I've just got it to stick either side. In a minute, I'm gonna I'm gonna brush some more on. My really fine toothbrushes, I don't have any paint brushes. So that makes uh, quite a bit of sort of. Well, it's damaged, isn't it? So it's gonna make that horrible noise. So I can't really do a great deal like loud or anything, but. There you get the Probably not the greatest um, song to actually put on with this. Need something a little bit less, uh, a little bit less banging. And you know, I'm going to go into the the classical stuff for some. It's not going to be too um, too much for it. Um, of course, this is one that we know. It does sound nice, and it can get quite loud. It can get loud enough to knock a quite a few years on what's left out of those speakers. I'm going to brush that one up, even though it's not come away yet. The the rubber is very very soft, so with a real thin layer or two of this stuff, it will just it just give that rubber a little bit more um, a little bit more elasticity and a bit more longevity, longevity, longevity. Yeah. There we go, but it's the power test really, we don't want to sit here and listen to loads of music. Let's see what we can get out of it. Now, I'm not going to say it's going to be absolutely great, these particular chips I got are from eBay. Um, so they could be... Oh, it's on my hand wrong. You know, so it could be genuine, probably not, but, but I suppose they've just licensed out to lots of different people now to produce if they want to. But anyway, put it all on one board, fired it up. I did put um, I did put one wire around the wrong way around, and I managed to start warming up the one ohm resistor between the output of the capacitor and the output. You want me to see it from down there? Let's put it for you. There's the one ohm. You see it? Look, a bit damaged, but it still works. It's still one ohm, so we can live with that. Oh, because I can't do the zoom. It's trying to redo my hands. So, uh, yeah, I'll do another little bit of another track just so you get a bit of, a, bit of an idea for what it sounds like. It does sound really nice. It sounds um, a lot more, um, what's the word for it? A lot more, there's just a lot more to it than the other little amp. All right, we've got that, uh, that interlude one again because we know how that one sounds, so. I'm not sure what the basic part's going to be like with this, but...
old VU meters. <laughs> Even though I know they're not exactly VU meters. And I've been playing with them too. I've had them both uh, apart. So I was looking inside. And oh, they're lovely. Absolutely lovely. Got them nice and bargainous price as well. And an original set of Avo leads in really nice condition. So I'm really chuffed about that. Really chuffed. And they're really accurate as well. They're accurate up there. Which is what I want, and I don't need accurate to loads of points. Um, but they're bang on for what I need, and then of course I've got one in the middle for doing the high resolution. But Pretty good, you get quite a lot of resolution off those anyway. Anyway, but back to this. So what I'm going to do now is, there you go, it sounds nice. It's got no dodginess sound into it. Um, although if you give it a little bit too much, that's, that's what I'm going about, but we're going to sort that out. So I'm going to get it connected up to the scope now. Both channels, I'm going to stick some uh, one kilohertz signal in there and see what we get. Stick the dummy loads on into the speakers. Well, back when I set it up. 